she was a, that 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 first run of um, of really young women competing against grown up women. You know, she had this like bubbly nature to her, like clearly like just the most adorable kid, but then also like this this deeper intensity, like just beneath it, where you're like the older old old soul in there. Um, with a lot to say. And she was the best little thing anyone had ever seen. I go, all you have to do is be the best every year. And by the time you get to be 16, you'll be in the Olympics. Yeah, I kind of had this quick rise onto the half pipe scene. And in 2006, um, the Olympics were in Torino. And I was kind of the underdog going into that event, no one really expected me to make the US team. I think because I was only 16 and I think that having like no pressure on me really played to my advantage and I ended up making the team. I qualified second and um, was the youngest competitor for the whole US team um, in, that, in those games and um, actually was the, the youngest competitor at, at the Olympics. I remember kind of realizing that I made the U.S. team and just being so excited and like this was like my childhood dream to go to the Olympics but I don't know that I really knew what that meant <laughs> like okay I'm gonna go to the Olympics this is super fun snowboard contest and I remember showing up and being just like so overwhelmed um, walking into opening ceremonies with like all of Team USA and realizing that like you're there like representing your country and like this is so much bigger than you and so much bigger than snowboarding and um, yeah I think it really overwhelmed me <laughs> and <laughs> um, I remember crying a few times during that event being like I don't think I'm ready for this <laughs> overall it was like the most amazing experience I ended up sixth in the Olympics um, which was a super good showing for me and um, at the time I was really happy with and um, it definitely made me appreciate all that the Olympics are and what they stand for which is like bringing the world together in like this peaceful union and I think it also made me really appreciate the snowboard industry a lot um, and just how tight-knit our community was and to be able to like experience that big expansion and then go back to snowboarding and have it be just like this family and like um, really back to like my core of why I loved the sport so much um, and I think I was able to carry that really through my career um, because of that experience at such a young age. It was the whole world to see um her come up and do what I wanted to do all my life, but couldn't. But um, it was a parent's dream, for sure. You know, in the beginning, it was so natural. You just go out there, oh, cool, I'll just do this trick, I'll just do this trick. And you don't, I don't feel like it really resonates like the tricks you're doing on the type of stage that you're doing it on. And then obviously, um, battling through injuries, which I think is always a big part of also kind of adapting your mindset in competition and learning tricks and pushing yourself. I mean, before concussions were really diagnosed a lot in snowboarding, I mean, I guess I could guess that she had, I'll just say she had multiple in one season, but she's always been so tough and she's not afraid to take the slam. I mean, that's why she's been so progressive. And then as we got older, I think it, it kind of starts weighing on you a little bit like she was so dominant winning so much going to multiple olympics that you can kind of see where the competition and that grind of hiking the half pipe pushing yourself there's it's dumping snow everywhere and you're riding an icy half pipe i could kind of see the fire dim a little bit in the in the competition setting but as far as like her in her element peak elena and contest I think she was always hard on herself as far as wanting to do well, but she was so naturally gifted that she could just go out there and she would flow through runs and she'd take a slam, get back up, and she kept moving. One of the things that really stands out to me about Elena's path is that is her her tenacity. 
like she always it, it seemed like was willing to take an honest look at herself and then dig really 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 deep to do the work to overcome whatever her fears might be or whatever was holding her back um, to continue to rise up to the level. Uh, one year she won a contest with a, her arm in a sling. Um, and it was an unbelievable, you know. It, she, she got hurt that day and they patched her all up right then and she went out and did border cross and still won. Four years later, the 2010 um, Olympics kind of came around and for me, winning an Olympic medal was always like, a huge life goal um, and so that one was something that I was really working towards and looking forward to. Um, I qualified for Team USA again um, and was able to compete in those games. Um, I ended up placing 10th um, which was not what I had hoped for uh, and it was a challenging games for me. We had really horrible conditions um, and I think that was kind of one of those moments in snowboarding where there's so much that you can't control uh, and yet the show must go on um, and so I think it was a hard hard blow for for, for me at the time um, to not to not come away with a medal from those games um, but I learned a lot and um, I think it fueled the fire for me even more. Um, I had been doing so well in contests going up to that point that um, it felt like a failure to come away without a, an Olympic medal, but also opened up a lot of um, opportunity for me to push myself even more um, in competitions and on my snowboard in different ways.